Welcome to the Matt Kuda Photography Podcast, a podcast about nature and wildlife photography in your own backyard and throughout the United States. Okay, welcome back to the podcast. This is Matt Kuda, the voice of reason in the wildlife photography and nature photography space. And this is episode 53. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the Canon 70 Mark II autofocus. Last time we talked about the AF configuration tool. Um, the time before that, uh, we talked about uh, my initial thoughts on the Canon 70 Mark II. And this time we're going to kind of finish that out. And we're going to talk about the remaining features of the Canon 7D II. So this time around, we're going to talk about first about AF area. So Canon basically supports seven options for selecting various groupings of AF points. The first uh, AF area that we're going to talk about is, is not really an area at all, but it's the single point spot AF mode. Um, single point spot is a mode that you can select on the camera by using the AF, the new AF selection lever. And that's the, the selection lever actually surrounds the joystick on the back of the camera. And it will allow you to actually cycle through these uh, various points, um, although you do have to enable that feature in order to use it. The, the single point spot is in effect basically a way to photograph your subject by sampling a very small portion of that subject to use for autofocus. So it's it's kind of the way I think of it is kind of a a spot within a spot. So it's a little rectangle within a big rectangle. Uh, how can this be used? For me, uh, I don't use this very often, but I may start using it a little bit more than I have in the past. Where I think this works is in situations where you have something that requires critical focus, like a macro shot, or you know you need to focus on the eye of the animal uh, when doing a, a a portrait, or even a human. You know you need to focus on the eye, and you don't want to get other parts of the subject in focus that you don't want. For example. If I was photographing the eye of a bird or any kind of mammal, really, a bison, for example, um, they have a lot of eyelashes around their eye. What can happen is your autofocus point can get hung up by and focus on the eyelash instead of the eye. And that's undesirable. You want the eye itself to be in focus. This is an example of a situation where you could do that. There's one caveat uh, to using the single uh, point spot is that this does not work well with moving subjects. And so using it with AI servo is not really what it's designed for. It's designed for static uh, images, uh, static subjects. I mean, that's where I would I would use it personally. Uh, I may I may try this out on the backyard birds a little bit um, just to, as a testing uh, ground and and I may use this at Photo Wild as well this year just to test it and see how it does. As far as other photographers using this, by by and large, most um, people that are advanced or in the pro space, if you will, do not typically use this setting. Uh, most of the time, they will either use manual focus or will uh, defer to just a single point. Now I would I would like to say that real quick here. Typically what I do when I have a critical focusing situation, let's say I'm photographing a landscape or a macro subject that's not moving, for example, you know, maybe I'm going to focus on a rock in my foreground um, of a waterfall picture, okay? And so I will typically use live view in this scenario and I will just zoom in to the rock and I will focus on the rock uh, in live view and that will be my focusing point. I, I, I use manual focus a lot for things like that. And I will even defer to manual focus for static subjects at, uh, that are close to me. Like, for example, a 
maybe I'm shooting a a you know an owl at an event and I want just crisp focus on that eye. I will use manual focus in those scenarios without even batting an eye. I will, I will use them. So that single point spot, um, it's a useful one. You know, I, I suggest leaving it in there. You can, you can. By the way, you can uh, enable or disable any of these autofocus uh, selections. The next type of AF area, if you will, is the single point. And this single point has been around, as far as I know, pretty much since autofocus was invented. Um, a single point just means that it's just a single tiny rectangle on your viewfinder, and that one point is used, and only that one point is used. Um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have any surrounding points. It doesn't try to hand off nothing like that. It's just a single point that you put on your subject. So that kind of begs the question well how do you know for the beginners out there how do i put that single point uh on the subject and the answer is you look through the viewfinder and while you're looking through the viewfinder there are two ways that you can move the autofocus points around the one i recommend is the joystick if possible and there's a little there's just a tiny joystick on the back of the on the 7d mark ii as well as the original 7d and you can just select the AF uh, button on top. I've got my 7D here. I want to make sure I don't lead you astray. Um, you're going to select on the top of the back. There's a, a funny looking button that is the AF select AF button. And once you depress that, you can then go into your look through your viewfinder and move that autofocus point around on the screen. Now, I'm kind of old school uh, in a sense. I I started doing this before there was a joystick on the back of the camera. And so a lot of times, although I really should use a joystick, I end up using the dial on the top of the camera to move it as well as the wheel uh, on the back. And that's an alternative way to do it. So you can use the joystick or you can use the dial, the dial and the uh, the wheel. Uh, to do that. It's up to you, whatever you're comfortable doing. Uh, personally, I think the joystick's a little bit faster, but you can get pretty fast uh, using those other two controls as well. So so why would I want to use a single point? I guess that's the, that's the next question. Um, single point is a way that you can precisely focus on a subject. So again, let's say that I want the eye in focus. I can use this single point and place it over the eye, you know, hold my shutter button halfway down or use my back button focus and actually focus on just the eye. I use this all the time. This is how I photograph almost everything with the exception of birds in flight and then even birds in flight sometimes. Um, you can much more precisely focus. And I would say that probably most pros or advanced amateurs also use single point predominantly uh, in their autofocus. So there's one more thing I wanted to mention uh, in regard to the single AF point, and it has to do with the 7D Mark II. The 7D Mark II has a feature that allows autofocus to engage even when you're using a lens at f8. That's an F8 lens, not you setting your aperture to F8. That's different. We're talking about the actual opening of the lens itself before the shutter button is, is released. So, for example, if you're using a, uh, a Canon 100 to 400 uh, Type 2, it's a 5.6 lens, you add a teleconverter to that, it now becomes an F8 lens. Okay, traditionally, uh, the, the previous version, the 7D, if you did that, you would lose autofocus. Well, with the 7D Mark II, you now retain autofocus, but only on the center point. And this is crucial. You can only put that single point in the center and leave it there. So that's a disadvantage, but it's better than losing autofocus. 
And I see that as a feature more than, uh, than something that harms you as a photographer. So there's that. And that's something you need to think about. Okay, so like I said before, I probably use this for 95% of my photography. Uh, everything from um, landscapes, uh, you know, mammals, birds, birds in flight. Everything can be photographed with that single point. You can use AI Servo with this. It's no problem. It's designed to be used with it. So that's not an issue. The next AF group, if you will, or or AF area, Canon calls it, is the AF point expansion with four surrounding points. Now, this is not new. This was actually on the Canon 7D, and I, I actually did use it on many occasions. Essentially how this works is, you can think of it as a single AF point, which we just talked about. That single AF point drives the autofocus, but there's one key difference. When I am using the AF ex point expansion, there are these helper points around it, four of them, one at the top, one at the bottom, one on the left, and one on the right of the selected AF point. Now, why is this important? Let's just say you're photographing... Um, a bird in flight. I mean, that's that's your typical scenario where this might be useful. You're photographing a bird in flight, and you're tracking him, and you've got that center point, you know, you've, or you've got that the AF point on the bird, and he's coming through the screen, your viewfinder, and suddenly he just makes a quick, you know, climb, and at that point, your center point kind of moves off from the bird. Well. In this case, as he's moving up, that top autofocus point will try to attain focus. Even though you've, you've lost him off the center point, it hands off that center point, what they call a handoff, hands off to that top point, and so you don't lose focus. This is a, a, a common scenario with, with AF point expansion and with group modes as well, which we're going to see in a minute. Um, I, I think this is a good one. I think uh, it's something to try in your own photography. I recommend uh, AF expansion for people that are maybe getting, especially new to birds in flight and are having a hard time keeping that center point on the bird. I mean, the, the uh, single point on the bird. Um, definitely worth a shot. And I, I think it's, I mean, there are a lot of pros and advanced photographers that use this all the time. But with the Canon 7D Mark II, they went a step further. They went from four points, and now they have an AF point expansion, eight points. Now this, I think, is even a little bit better, and this is probably one that I will use with Birds in Flight, uh, at least experimentally. Uh, and again, it uses the same principle you use the one point, you move it around, you get it over your subject, you follow your subject. If the subject moves or your arms get tired and you kind of waver a little bit, the idea is that it will hand that, that center point will hand off to one of its helper points. Now, you, you start getting into some other bad possibilities here. And it gets even worse with the group points we're going to talk about or the zone points. The problem here is that, in theory, it's possible that you would actually focus on the wrong thing, or the camera would focus on the wrong thing. But, having said that, had, had you only had that single AF point, you might have lost focus anyway, because the bird is dipping and diving, or it's, you know, your, your arms are tired because you've been shooting for an hour and a half. Um, that's another good reason to use this AF point expansion, eight surrounding points. The Canon literature does state that this mode resists grabbing the background. So, you know, that's Canon literature. I can't speak to that out of experience. But supposedly it, it can kind of evaluate and determine that something is the background versus the subject. So it will try not to do that. 
Um, I I doubt myself that it's that effective, but you know, if you've had a good experience with it, you know, let me know. The next type of AF area is a totally different scenario that we're getting into now. This is what's called Zone AF, and Zone AF was introduced in the Canon 7D original. Zone AF is the idea that you have these 15 AF points, and this differs from the surround, the, the center point and surround, because this one actually does not have a center point per se. Although there is a point in the center, it does not use that to acquire focus. It will acquire focus on anything within that zone. So anything within those 15 points that show up are going to be fair game for the autofocus system. Um, there are people that use this. A lot of pros shy away from this mode simply because of the danger of the autofocus picking up a part of your subject you don't want. For example... Um, picking up the side of the wing or picking up the foot of the bird instead of its beak or its eye. So that can be a bad thing. However, again, if you're someone that has trouble keeping that autofocus point on the subject, if you're someone that has uh, trouble um, holding up their lens for long periods of time, uh, this might be a good option for you. I would pay particular attention to it or I should say I would pay particular attention to problems with background interference. Uh, again, using this mode, it try, you know, again, Canon states that it tries to not grab onto the background. But be aware that that could be an issue. I myself, with the original 7D, did not have a lot of confidence in Zone AF. Uh, I never got it to work real well for me. But then again, the Canon 7D Classic was not a great birds in flight camera. You know, so that's, you can take that or leave it, I guess. In the Canon 7D Mark II, Canon introduced a totally new Zone AF called Large Zone AF. Concept is the same as the Zone AF, but in this case, it has these huge zones. It has a, a zone on the left, a zone in the center and a zone on the right. And anything, again, that flies into that zone or anything that walks into that zone or anything that you point your camera at that's in that zone is fair game for this camera to focus on. Again, I'm going to reiterate that you may have difficulty with this picking the wrong part of a bird, for example. Canon has had difficulty with this in the past where... This is one of the things that Art Morris uh, used to complain about all the time with the 1DX. Uh, it, would, it would snag the foot of an eagle, for example, and the head would be out of focus. And that's not desirable. That is, a, that is a bad shot. That is a shot that's going in my trash bin. Okay, so that's something to consider. Uh, if you do use large zone AF, I would definitely only use it with backgrounds that are not cluttered. For example, a blue sky. Um, you know, whatever scenario you can think of that would have a clean background. Because if you have something that has uh, objects in the foreground, objects at the same level as your subject, and objects in the background, there's a good chance that it's going to get confused and start hunting and, and moving focus on you. And that, of course, is not what we want. Uh, but Large Zone AF is available. Give it a shot. See what you think. And then the last one is one that's been around, again, for a very, very long time. And it's called All AF Points. Um, all AF Points is just that. Anything that, f that moves through your scene or that you point your camera at that is within your viewfinder, pretty much, on the 7D2, is fair game for autofocus. The camera is going to try to focus on it, and that's how it's going to work. It's a very automatic mode. It's a mode that you need to be very, very careful with because it will grab focus on things you don't want it to grab focus on. I know on the 7D, I had difficulty with it grabbing background. However, I will say this. If you are photographing a bird on a blue sky 
and particularly a bird that is difficult to photograph. Uh, one that's very erratic, like a, a swallow or a chimney swift or something like that. Then this mode may help you. Okay. It is very, very difficult to keep an autofocus point on a bird moving that quickly. And sometimes it's best to let the camera pick. And so I, I will probably experiment with this mode with the chimney swifts this year up at uh, Pilot Mountain. And I'll let you know how that goes. I'll probably use this mode and I'll probably use large AF and just test that and see how it works. But again, very careful with these modes. They're here for very specific scenarios. Again, I would not use this for everyday use. I would use single point or single point with surround for my everyday use. Well, that's pretty much all I had for this episode. It's a short episode. I just wanted to kind of round out the Canon 7D Mark II autofocus features. Um, not sure what I'm going to do on the next episode. I may do one more on the Canon 7D, but I really don't want to do too many more because, you know, not everybody shoots Canon. And not only that, you know, not everybody shoots the 7D. Now, what I just told you in this episode is also directly applicable to the Canon 1DX. So if you own the 1DX, all these autofocus features and how they work are exactly the same. But I will say this, uh, I, I one thing I did want to mention about the Canon 7D too, I took it out this, week, this past weekend uh, to do some bird photography. And it was a very dark day. And I wanted to see how it would do at some pretty high ISOs. So I took it out and I photographed mostly around 3,200 and all the way up to 4,000. I didn't go past 4,000. What I discovered was that it is still usable at ISO 4000 with a few caveats. Uh, I did notice uh, that there was a lot of noise in the background, in the, in the dark areas, in the shadow. And that's a common problem. You know, shadow noise is, is the number one problem with, with all cameras. All digital cameras suffer from that, whether they're full frame or whether they're uh, APS-C. But, of course, on the APS-C, it's more pronounced. But I did notice that the subject itself seemed to be pretty good. I mean, it was sharp. Um, if I had photographed with the original 7D at ISO 4000, it would have been horrendous, right? I mean, it just it, it would have looked awful. And I, I photographed at 6400, and it was just unusable pretty much with the old one. Now with this one, I'm fairly happy. Would I shoot with it all the time at that? No. I mean, that's just not, not going to give you the best results. The other thing that I noticed was I was using um, the Nick collection with it, uh, and I was doing a pass of, of uh, denoise, and I did notice some artifacts that were generated uh, probably due to the extreme luminance noise in it. And so bear that in mind, at 100%, I was seeing some pretty funky, uh, weird stuff going on in there in the JPEG, in the final JPEG. So something to definitely think about. The, the 7D series is not ever going to be as good no on the noise side of things as you know, a comparable full frame camera. So you're, you're never going to get to the quality of a 5D3 or 5D4. That's just not going to happen. But I think that this camera really is a lot better than the 7D on ISO performance. Uh, I don't hesitate at all to shoot it at ISO, you know, 400, 640, 800. In a pinch, I'll take it up to 1600. Seems to be fine. If I'm really in a pinch, 3200. Um, but you know, do try to keep it below 3,200. I think you, you would do yourself a, a significant favor there, but if you have to, you know, if you're in that scenario where it's very dark and you still need to get that shot, go ahead and bump it up. You know, it, it, it'll be fine. Um, so anyway, that's all I had for today. Thanks for listening. Make it a great day and get out there and enjoy nature. Bye-bye.
Music for this episode was provided by Dr. Turtle.